welcome to another fantastic week of Life Changes Everything. We're going to be talking about guilty pleasures. And you know what? We're not doing guilty pleasures week. We're not doing guilty pleasures, you know, two weeks. We're doing guilty pleasures month. Personally, I do not believe in guilty pleasures. I believe that people like things, and they should be happy with the fact that they like things. And I believe that they should own their liking of things and not feel guilty about it because liking things is natural. There are certain songs that are produced by terrible, terrible artists that are actually good, and that's why people like them. But for the sake of this month, I am just going to go with it. This week we're talking about music, and I'm a writer of music. I have been for about 16 years. I'm also a huge listener of music. I have all kinds of music that I'm into. Lately, I've been getting into Hall & Oates. And there's a sense that Hall & Oates are kind of a cheesy band that you should be embarrassed about liking if you do like them. Again, don't agree with that. I like them because I like their music, and it sounds good to my ears. However, some of the songs that sound good to my ears, I'm a little surprised by. In the past year, uh, this person, CeeLo Green, released a certain song with a certain offensive song title. I love that song. I could not get enough of it when I heard it. I play it pretty often still now, even after like the big kerfuffle over the song occurred, and I, it's just a good song. Hall & Oates have sort of a 70s equivalent of that song. It is called Rich Girl. I really believe Rich Girl is a legitimately good song. However, if you move on through their catalog, really, really excellent songs don't happen all that often. I just find all their songs to be really catchy and kind of goofy and fun. There's something about white guys playing Motown-inspired music that's sort of cute and endearing. My father's a huge fan of Motown, and he sort of raised me to have an appreciation for it by playing it all the time in the car while we were driving around and stuff. So I developed like a huge ear for like real classic rhythm and blues and Motown and sort of the blending of rhythm and blues with pop to create uh, these really excellent catchy songs that had a lot of emotion and I always enjoyed when the Rolling Stones played with Motown because they sort of brought a more edgy rock and roll approach to the genre and the end result was something that you know in some cases I like more than Motown itself because I'm a rock and roller and I like the guitars and the gritty voices and the pain and the anguish that are in the vocals and stuff like that. So Hollow Notes, I mean, you know, they eventually kind of turned into this really dorky, cheesy pop band in the 80s, and there's so much dorky, cheesy pop in the 80s, I have a real strong love for it. When my parents weren't playing Bob Dylan on the radio, and when they weren't playing Motown, and when they weren't playing classic rock on the radio, they were playing light rock on the radio. So I spent a lot of time in the car with my parents listening to very, very bad music. To be honest, Hall & Oates were really kind of standouts, which isn't saying much, but still, it counted for something. I remember as a child being in the car and listening to Maneater by Hall & Oates and being really freaked out because I was too young to really understand, I guess, the metaphor of the song, and I sort of took it literally. So I was like, you know, six years old, and I was completely creeped out by the idea of a woman who actually ate men physically. Thanks, Hall & Oates, for terrorizing me as a child. Other songs like You Make My Dreams Come True... <sighs> I don't know, I just... I They're so catchy. I just like them. They make me happy. I'm very curious to see what Steph and Monica have to say about this in particular, because they are huge hardcore music fans, not that our other channel mates aren't. Steph and Monica, I think you're already familiar with how insane they are about Bruce Springsteen, and they have that same sort of passion for a lot of bands, so I'm curious to see what their musical guilty pleasure is. Of course, the obvious question of the day is, what's your favorite Hall & Oates song? Tell me what it is and why. Alright, have a good day.